I want to get Dr. Meyer's opinion on this. Um, classifying it as white Jew, because we know there's black Jews, you know. How does that, how does that make you feel? How does that, how does that initially hit you when I say, yeah, you know, if I said black and white Jewish relations? Um, I guess that's mostly what I deal with is, is in my courses is, is those, are those interactions. I think, um, again, in America, most Jews are Ashkenazic Jews who mm -hmm. are white. Sometimes part of the problem between the two communities is that some people will take advantage of that, mm -hmm. will use their whiteness as a way of promoting themselves, as a way of integrating themselves into whatever community they want to be in by removing themselves and denigrating themselves from some other community. Right. I, I find that problematic. Jewishness is categorized as whiteness okay. here in the States at this present, at this present moment. Right. Um, and it, in different places and different times, it's been categorized differently. So if I look at the ship arrival records from my immigrant ancestors who came over under uh, race and people, it says Hebrew. Mm. There. And this is, a US, this, is the, this is in English in a, in a document that the US government is using. It's 100 and some odd years old. Right. Now, at the same time, Jews in the South were drinking from fountains that were labeled as white. So, and so they were categorized by the government for those purposes as white. So the, Jews' relationship to mm. whiteness is, um, it, it's, uh, there's ambivalence, but it's not a totally fixed category. Right. And when you think about, you think about the massacre um, at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, and this is by an avowed white nationalist, white supremacist, mm -hmm who targeted Jews and did not see them as white. Mm. So Jews, on the, on the one hand, ha, the, Jews will enjoy the privileges of whiteness. So right. Ashkenazi Jews will enjoy the privileges of whiteness and at the same time are being targeted with violence by those people who are the most invested in some quote-unquote white identity. By the way, the uh, Ashkenazi are Hebrews, but so are the Chinese, who in the Bible are the Moabites, the Japanese, who are the Ammonites. So are the uh, East Indians, who are Elam. All of those, for, for the most part, they are just not Hebrew Israelites. Now, I could sit here and explain why for the, uh, for the most part, but that's not where we're going here. That's an entirely different lesson. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 12 says this. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of great millstone who do rule well. Shalom to you of us who are hopeful. Shalom to the elect. Now, the reason why I opened with Revelation 12 and 12 is because of a recent exchange that took place on my comment board and the thoughts left by uh, yet another so called white esau isn't he's not white he's red when he laughs cries is angry coughs throws up even his true color shines through his translucent skin esau's name in the hebrew is ishashua meaning wasted away is he in any event the so-called white supremacist scoffer come lately whose uh bit shoot handle is uh, for his namesake is in desperate need of edification particularly in the Hebrew and in what the uh, scriptures say overall. Uh, the ironic thing about this gentleman is he doesn't even know the Lord or his son's name. Proverbs 30 and 4, one of the responses I gave on the common board. Uh, who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. Now Solomon asks if thou canst tell because it is a secret that has been revealed to with all humility the election of Israel only Amos 3 and 7 surely the Lord power Yahweh will do nothing but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets uh, Sirach 17 and 10 says and the elect shall praise his holy holy meaning pure meaning set apart and the elect shall praise his holy name if you are the real Israelite to serve, then how come you don't know the Lord's name or his son's? And even when it is given to you, you do everything else but receive it. The answer is pretty much in Malachi 1 and 14. But cursed be the deceiver, which hath in his flock a male, and voweth and sacrifices unto the Lord a corrupt thing, 
pretty much what Cain did. For I am a great king, saith Yahweh of hosts, the Lord of armies, uh, celestial and terrestrial. And my name is what? Dreadful among the heathen. The Most High's name is not God or Lord. Those are not names. Those are their titles. Uh, the Most High's name is not Jehovah, Yahovah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Ahaya. And his son's name is not Yeshua or Jesus. A quick lesson in the Hebrew. The Hebrew alphabet, the, the uh, alphabet can be found in Psalms 119, every eight verses, except you and I do believe you are an Edomite, sir. Not because of your lack of pigmentation, but because of your spirit. The Bible tells us Israel was scattered across all nations. So you are going to have Israelites who look like Esau, i.e. so-called white people. Some are going to look so-called Asian, a Malaysian, Chinese, East Indian, etc., etc. There are Israelites scattered amongst the heathen in present-day Israel today. The so-called Jewish uh, community are not Israelites for the most part. They're Israeli converts. Uh, ish is a suffix which means like. They are Jew-like because they adopted the tradition of our Israelite forefathers for the reason of self-preservation and commerce and trade, truth be told. Uh, in any event, it is you, the heathen, who have anglicized the words. Alaf has become Aleph, exchanging the second A for an E. And Wa has become Va, but in the Paleo, uh, paleo meaning original Hebrew. There are no E's, V's, J's, F's, O's, or U's. Vowels and uh, uh, vowel points are a corruption of the Lashawan Kodash, uh, with the exception of A, of course, and I. What we know to be called uh, the Holy Tongue, ergo the Hebrew by the Masoretes. Uh, the Masoretes uh, means, uh, the name means masters of the tradition, a bunch of so-called Jewish uh, scribe scholars. Now, going to my notes, uh, it says this. Historical evidence suggests that the letter Bwa originally had a W sound, such as walk. Obviously, it is the more ancient pronunciation that our English W conveys, which even the American Indians retained in their language from the original Hebrew. For at one time, the whole Salakia, the whole was of world, was of one language and one speech. Uh, Genesis 11 and 1 is the precept. Uh, place names in America such as Waxahashi, uh, Texas, Nawada, Oklahoma, Hiawassee, Georgia, and Iowa show and prove this idea. Okay, there you go. The most important thing in this truth is to know the true names of the Father and Son. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahawa. Yah meaning He, Hawa meaning exists. He exists, ergo, He is the all and all in everything, good and bad. Isaiah 45 and 7, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahweh, Lord in all capitals, was used to replace the true name of the Heavenly Father. I, Yahweh, do all these things. Evil is a compound word. F meaning age or time. Ill meaning bad. Ergo, bad times for those who trespass against the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High Power. Uh, Lamentations 3 and 38. Out of the mouth of the Most High proceeded not evil and good. Again, good or bad, the Most High is responsible, be it in speech or action. And yes, he does in fact interfere in human affairs, ladies and gentlemen. So whatever is done is done of his will and choosing. It is Yahweh that rules in the kingdom of men, not the elite, not you white supremacists. It is the Heavenly Father that directs your path, even through interference. It is the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that reveals his true name to whosoever he sees fit. Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. As I said, the first most important thing is knowing the true names of the Father and his Son. Uh, these are the keys to salvation. Uh, Jesus is not his name. It is Yahweh Shai, which means he delivers or he saves because he is the redeemer of Israel. Uh, remember, Joseph and Mary were both of the line of Judah. They were so-called Jews who spoke Hebrew, uh, the Lashawan Kodash, if you will, the Holy Tongue. The scriptures tell us Yahweh Shai was a so-called Jew. So obviously he had a Hebrew name, the language which they spoke. Never mind the fact that uh, the book of Matthew was written in Hebrew, the same tongue it was inspired 
Uh, so the name of the Savior had to have been a Hebrew word or name. The Greek word for save or Savior is Soter. Soter derives from the uh, Greek epithet meaning a Savior, a Deliverer. Um, yet the, the Greek spelling for Jesus is not Soter, is it? It is Iesus. And the only reference the uh, Strong's Concordance, for those not in the know, the Strong's is a Bible concordance, i.e. dictionary, if you will, that indexes every single word in the 1611 King James Version of the Bible. The only reference the Strong's Concordance directs us to is Strong's Greek 2424, referring us back to Strong's Hebrew 3091, then Strong's uh, uh, Hebrew uh, 3467 and 3068, respectively. The two words compounded brings us to the correct translation of his name. Anglicized, it's Joshua. Uh, the definition meaning Yahweh saves or savior. But remember, there are no U's in the original Hebrew. For those who know how to read Hebrew, not Yiddish, which is a mutt language comprised of English, Dutch, uh, German, African, etc., you can clearly see it reads Yahweh Shai. Okay? The next uh, relative importance is having the knowledge of this truth and knowing the doctrine. Now, how you found my page, sir, is anybody's guess. But then again, we're not just anybody, are we? We, hopeful elect men of Israel, are the most talked about and most sought after as of late. Right, vocab? I mean, uh, everybody and their granny is doing a video on the uh, Israelites. Uh, as you can see, relating to the opening clip. Why? Because Yahweh has commissioned us to articulate his will. He has always elected particular men of faith to uncover his judgments. He tells us in Isaiah 13 and 12, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Uh, the beginning of this was obtaining the knowledge of this truth. That is what sets us apart. That is what makes us precious. The devil's job, devils like for his namesake, is to deceive and take peace away from the earth. So true and eternal peace is a world where Esau's not ruling and even truer still, where he's not in it. Esau knows that this reality is making manifest as we speak, going back to Revelation 12 and 12. For those of the faith, you know that this is just prophecy coming to pass because there is no other movement with over 13 million headstrong professing to be Israelites, okay? Again, the you know who's don't call themselves Israelites. They call themselves Israeli. So who else then? I'll wait. Lamentations 4 and 1. How has the gold become dim? How is the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. The precious sons of Zion are comparable to fine gold. How are they esteemed as earthen pitchers? The work of the hands of the Potter, meaning we were once worth our weight in gold. Now we are nothing more than esteemed jars of clay. The truth is we were and yet are still that fine gold. But because of all the wickedness we perpetuated as a nation, we are nothing now. We have become dross, dim, defiled, and, and impure. Yahweh is only dealing with the elect, the chosen of the chosen children of Israel. A selected few for the purpose of the Most High's will are waking up and remembering the atrocities committed against we Israelites, starting with the hijacking of our identity, the rape, robbing, pillaging of our people, and the subjugation of our land. Esau, knowing we are regaining our senses, has demonized it by calling it wokeism. Another tactic Esau uses as far as his demonization of we hopeful elect men who aren't out here pants sagging, tattoos on our face, talking about blunts and broads. We're simply prophesying and preaching this truth from the Bible. They say we are trying to start a race war against all white people. Uh, that's a Maury Povich lie. We'll be the first to tell you that's a war we can't win. Okay. First off, Esau is a natural born killer. His blessing on this earth, besides his deceptive nature, has always been the sword. Uh, Genesis 27 and 40 is the precept there. And by thy sword shalt thou live. Ergo, we'll never have access to the weaponry, the powers that shouldn't be got. There is no fighting Esau on that level. Uh, secondly, and more importantly, uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, 
but mighty through Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, to the pulling down of strongholds. Our weapons of war are spiritual, not guns, not mobilizing troops or organizing militias, not strategizing war efforts. Uh, strongholds in the Greek is the word Aku Roma. In the Strong's Concordance, strongholds is described as a castle, a fortress, figuratively to fortify an argument. In the Thayer's Greek lexicon, it defines it as meaning, the Thayer's Greek is a, a concordance as well, for, uh, for um, lack of a better terminology, and just in order for you to understand. It's an equivalent to the Strong's, okay? So in the Thayer's Greek lexicon, it defines it as meaning of the arguments and reasonings by which a disputant endeavors to fortify his opinion and defend it against his opponent. The disputant is Esau who argues white supremacy and who reasoned with us by giving, uh, giving us plantation Christianity, who commissioned paintings in the Renaissance period to give us white angels, a white God and a, and a white Jesus. Till this day he has Israelites believing there is salvation in calling on those said names, uh, Jehovah and, and Jesus. Esau thinks uh, his crafty efforts, his agendas and predictive programming, his speculative arguments and his high-minded ideas about rulership that are clearly grounded in pride can withstand the power and spirit of the Heavenly Father that fuels this truth. The knowledge of this truth, using the scriptures and bringing out factual evidence, is how we pull down these strongholds. If you're looking for present-day strongholds, then Look no further than the jab and the karagma, the uh, MOTB, the mark of the beast system. The beast of burden he's trying to mark is you. Uh, Ecclesiastes 9 and 18 says, Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroyeth much good. The uh, Creflo Dollars and the T.D. Jakes of the world who know this truth yet lead the flock astray and won't tell you who we really are that we are the Hebrew Israelites and rightful judges of the earth. And they do this for filthy lucre's sake and because they believe the covenant they've made with death will keep them safe when all hell breaks loose, has uh, aided in keeping Jake, for the most part, dumb, deaf, and blind. Isaiah 28 and 15 is the precept there. But all according to the will of the Heavenly Father because not everybody is meant to get it. Uh, you know, with these comment board scoffers, they're rhetoric is always the same blacks could never be the real jews they suffer from the curse of ham uh, what the mormons doctrine used to be before they went for a more progressive ideology to bring people in uh, don't be mad at us whites we be mad at the uh the you know who's who have already admitted to being esau uh, by the way it's them that had you in chains they owned the slave ships uh, by the way it's the you know who's who have you so-called blacks believing you are israelites we whites are the Saxons and the true sons of Isaac. Uh, Revelation 12 and 12. Let's get it again and go into it because no matter what the argument is, what Esau's reasoning is, no matter the art of his deception, no matter the size of the missile or how many gats he brung, the reason behind it is, is the same. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Why? Because it is time for Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai to take that great dragon that old serpent esau eat him out called the devil and satan satan simply meaning adversary that's uh revelation 12 and 9. esau the devil the scriptures is talking about with a capital d devil meaning deceiver he has deceived the whole world with his image and his philosophies he's quick to point the finger when really it is he who is cursed uh, deceiver because what he won't tell you is white is not a race it is a political designation. It only became a race in 1681 through legislation because of the privileges it gave indentured so-called European Christians over so-called Negro slaves. The irony being the so-called Negro slaves were the real Christians. They weren't Africans. Their nationality was Hebrew Israelite. Yes, the you know who's are Edomites, but the so-called Europeans who identify with pale and translucent skin are Edomites too. Okay. The Greeks, Romans, Spaniards, the French, Germans, British, which uh, the Brits, which is where America came out of, are all of the same line. They're all of the same stock and for the most part are the same nation of people. The you know who's who we know biblically are the seed of Amalek are direct kin to Esau, Edom. Amalek was Esau's grandson. That's uh, Genesis 36 and 15 on down. 
Genesis 36 and 15 on down confirms that fact. Amalek is the chief house of Esau Edom, and although they did not share the wealth with the rest of Esau, they gave them the privileged system of being called white. For the hearing impaired, again, white is not a race. It is a product of legislation written in 1681. This is the foundation of so-called white people, the white establishment and white supremacy. But nobody's white. There are no white or black people. Those are social constructs uh, created by the powers that shouldn't be in order to divide and, and, and control. Okay. Yes, the you know who's helped fund the program and system of slavery. And, and they bought the ships. But who ran the plantations? Now, here's the problem. Willie Lynch, by all accounts, was a British slave owner with a plantation in the West Indies that was invited to the uh, colony of Virginia in 1712 to teach his methods to the uh, slave owners of the new world, uh, detailing how one should break his Negro. Uh, when you do some digging, you find out that he too was a you-know-who, changing his last name to Lynch from Linsky. See, these are the hidden details that allow American so-called white supremacists to separate themselves again from British imperialism and claim cover-up, okay? Revelation 17 and 9 says this, And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Again, mountains are governments or rulerships. The seven heads on one beast speaks to the same nation of people at rule. And the woman represents who we know to be Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations on the earth, a.k.a. the United States of Make America Great Again. Revelation 17 and 10, And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. In short, the five that fell are Rome, Germany, Major, Minor, uh, France, Greece, Spain. And out of the five, the first that came into power is Spain, going back to Cristobal Colon. Uh, the other that is not yet come here speaks to Great Britain, the last ruling empire. And out of Britain came who? America, starting with the 13 colonies. Now, when you understand this truth and you understand the factual evidence presented by uh, secular history that no removing of statues and outlawing of uh, critical race fact can change and the documents they thought we niggers would never have the intelligence to read that we can research today, it is clear to see they're all the same people. Matter of fact, they are the same people that make up the top banking families on the earth today. All the way down to the peons like Joe Sixpack here, these Niggas are going out kicking and screaming because they know their time is short. The reason why the supremacists are ramping up their rhetoric is because they're losing their power, their privilege, and essentially their system of control, okay? Essentially why they want to institute the MARC, the uh, MOTB, linking it to a digital monetary system. It's all about total control. Esau is scrambling to stay in power because... It's obvious he doesn't want to relinquish his rulership. He doesn't want to give up having all the other nations in, in servitude. Never mind give up his lifestyle. Can you blame him? I mean, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down onto you having great wrath. An example of that wrath, we can go back to uh, Operation Warp Speed. That's a great example. Why was the DOD the... Department of Defense, essentially the military called in to impose a mandatory jab. Remember the algorithm. If the You Know What 19 didn't have anything to do with 5G, then why was the operation called Warp Speed? Keep in mind, it is the DOD that is the largest deployer of the 5G network. Use your minds, people. Esau was moving at warp speed to enforce the mandatory shot, which we now know was just a test run that will eventually lead to the implementation of the RFID micro C to the H to the I to the P. I'm willing to bet 6G is the network that the new system of total control will run on. Now, you know what the military in conjunction with the FEMA and uh, ATF, etc., are here for to impose the draconian, draconian going back to the word dragon, the draconian measures of the elite. Another example of Esau's wrath is the missing 30 tons of ammonium as nitrate. Now, what do you suppose whoever has it, wink, wink, is going to do with that?
How about the fires raging across Eastern Canada and its effect on the air quality in America? What the deceiver won't tell you for obvious reasons is those fires did not spread. They were all set at the same time. What mainstream media and your corporate news stations won't report to you is those fires didn't even start in Canada. They were set around the tunnels that could uh, be found near the 11 Finger Lakes. Now that the uh, heat is on, pardon the pun, and all eyes are on uh, human trafficking, as well as this uh, administration, they are trying to uh, cover their tracks. Salute to uh, Earth Monroe for bringing this out. Guess whose son's laptop has a picture of his back depicting the same land area? I'm, I'm unbelievable. You can't write this stuff. Do you know how much children go missing every year without a trace? These children are being sex trafficked, okay? One child was found with 67 traces of DNA in her system the other day. These missing children are being exploited, killed, and used for ritual sacrifice. Yes, believe the hype, okay? Tell me that this in itself isn't great wrath when you consider a lot of these children being trafficked are so-called migrants and indigenous peoples that we know links back to the Israelites. Whoever took that 60 pounds of explosive chemical, you need to ask them who started those fires and where those children are. Let's close with this. Let's go to Ezekiel, the 35th chapter, and we'll start at, we'll start at one. I didn't mean for this lesson to be that long because um, I know the attention span, the average attention span of, of Jake, and really this was an impromptu, but I had to get to it. This uh, gentleman was talking too much. He was talking too spicy on the comment board, so I had to address it. In any event, Ezekiel 35 and 1, and it says this, Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. Mount Seir uh, present day represents the uh, government of Esau. The headquarters of Esau's rulership is, in fact, America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great. Racism, which is the hatred of a class of peoples, along with the willful, along with, okay, everything else that is being described as, as racism isn't really racism, it's prejudice. Racism is a different beast, okay? It's along with the willful intent to stagnate the growth of a said nation of people because of their difference in not only phenotype, but culture, and, and even more simply put to understand the color of their skin. Coupled with ideas of white privilege and superiority is the foundation of Edomite rule, okay? This here that we're the reading in Ezekiel is a prophecy against the nation of Edom because of their perpetual hatred held against Israel. We so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Indians, and of course those of us that are scattered amongst the other nations. Okay, Ezekiel 35 and 3. And say unto it, thus saith the Lord Power Yahweh, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out mine hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am Yahweh. Uh, Isaiah 63 and 1 is an excellent precept there for those of you at home who, uh, who research and study this thing of ours. Uh, Ezekiel 35 and 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel, by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Uh, time of calamity is in reference to the time period in which Yahweh was bringing judgment against we Israelites for not keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. The sword was and is Esau. An example of that force is the uh, transatlantic slave trade. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord Power Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Ergo, because of your bloodlust, your passion for shedding blood, and because you've made a living from war and disease, to the point you've been able to accumulate wealth so that it can be passed down and distributed from generation to generation, the Most High has decreed your blood must now be shed. Again, Esau knows this so-called white rulership, white pride, white privilege, white supremacy, the so-called white establishment, they know this too, which explains all the uh, the kicking and screaming and his minions with their lame, non-spiritual and uneducated comments on my page. How dare you? How dare ye? <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> we'll see what's what in the kingdom. That I will say. I hope and pray I am a part of that election. In any event, call Halal Yahweh, Bashim Yashai, Bashim 
through the power and spirit, I hope you are edified. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who teach us 100% truth and rule well. Salutations to the hopeful elect. Remember, no tests, no goddamn jab, and damn sure, don't take that C to the H to the I to the P. Shalom, Yasharala. Shalom to the elect. Mm -hmm.